Would it be better sometimes to have not won? No, not at all. Not at all. Not for one minute. I'm glad of everything I've got. I think it comes with the territory, you know, all the, all the external stuff. But, you know, I, I just handled it in my own way and have continued to handle it in my own way, which isn't always the best way at times, I admit. But um, I'm only human at the end of the day. What is it that you think you do wrong then? Well, the odd swear word, swearing at the paps when I come out of the hospital, all that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, I apologise <laughs> sincerely. And, um, you know, I, I can say I'm only human at the end of the day. And um, it's, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a bit of a roller coaster since the Olympics finished, but there's been far more highs than lows. And um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have changed anything for the world. Look, about only being human, Sir Bradley. It's all right. You're focusing on the Giro. Who knows what will happen after that? Yeah. It looks at the moment that Chris Froome will be tour leader. Is that difficult? No, n not really, because that's my choice, what I've chosen to do. You know, I want to um, mix things up a bit, keep it fresh. The trouble after the Olympics was I was always going to... I felt like I was going to struggle to recapture that sort of desire and that fire that I had for, for so long trying to win the tour. And then I won the tour, and it's like, well, what am I going to do now? And so... You know, I'd, it took me a while to think, you know, obviously I get asked, I got asked a lot during various interviews throughout sort of August, September, October. And I kind of saying, well, I'd like to do this or I'd like to do that. And, and um, it wasn't until actually, I think I left here on the 15th of December that I sat with Dave the night before Sports Personality and we made the decision then. So it took that amount of time. And <coughs> the Giro has always been there for me and it was always sort of the, the natural thing is, oh, we'll go back and try and win the Tour again. But... I would love to win the Tour of it. I'm a massive fan of cycling and the Tour of Italy for me is up there with the Tour de France. So it's something that, you know, the fan in me would love to win. So that, and since then I've, you know, had that fire back and been out training and really, you know, grafting and everything. So In terms of the team and the team dynamics, given that there were, uh, at least supposedly, some moments of friction in the, in the Tour with Chris, can you ever be mates with him outside being teammates? Um, well, we never... Really, I mean, we Chris lives on the other side of the world to me, really. So when we're in the off season, and um, we, I mean, it's not. I mean, I, I would say most of the team, I don't have any contact with outside of the team. We all go home. We work together as professionals, and we all go home, and and we've all got lives outside of cycling. A lot of the younger lads keep in touch and go out on the lash in the winter and stuff together, but. I've got another life, so it's not something that it was never there before anyway, and we come together and we work as professionals and we're in the same team. We have an incredible respect for each other as athletes. And um, But in terms of sort of friendship and mixing and going down the pub, I mean, I don't do that with anyone really, so it, it's not there anyway, but that's that's not a single thing. It's not something, oh, well, he don't get on. Well, I don't go with Richie or I don't go with Mick Rogers or I don't go with Christian Nice and that. We all have our own lives outside of the team, so... I know you've been itching to talk about Lance Armstrong, oh, yeah, so I, I, I thought I'd throw one in. You would have heard Nicole Cook's <coughs> fairly bitter parting comments when she retired, talking about how she'd been put under pressure, how some of her friends and colleagues have been put under pressure. When have you been put under pressure to do Never been put under pressure, full stop. I mean, I've been very... You've never, never experienced, experienced it, no one's ever said No, that. I was very fortunate. I came into the sport in 2002, I turned professional. And I went to a French team. And at that time, the French cycling had been through the mill in 98 with the Festina Affair. And s French cycling had cleaned its act up. And so from, from day one as a professional, I was within a team that had, had been through that in 98. And four years on from that, we're now starting this new generation. And those generations have come through now, the likes of Thomas Vockler and everyone. Um, so timing-wise, you know, I'd come out of a British system, which was anti-doping. And um, I went fortunate enough to go straight into a professional team at 21 that, that also had that stance. And I've gone through, you know, my years in France with those teams, um, then went to Garmin, which was, again, you know, 100% clean, and then came to Sky. So the timing of my career, I was, I was never put in that position. So it was, um, I was been very fortunate in some ways. And just in terms of, of you and your family background, and I believe you've written about it in, 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 yeah. your, in, in your book, the, the knowledge about, about your father, and I hope this isn't awkward, but the nappy smuggling, yeah. how does that inform your own zero tolerance approach? Well, that, 
that that's my own experiences with and that that's what happened to my father i mean what I, I, it's, it's, it's public knowledge what happened to my father as a result of um the way he raced the way he lived his life and everything and that's to me has always been a lesson and a reason with my own children and that as not a way to live my life you know and i think um this whole thing now with Lance and that, and I sat and I was determined not to watch the interview, but I sat and watched it with my own seven-year-old son, who was then asking me questions of what, what are they talking about? So I'd have to say they explained to him that he, yeah, he won the race, your father just won last year. Mm. And so from my own experiences, my own father and everything, it, it almost st stood me in good stead as, as a way not to live your life, really. So again, I'll take the positives from everything that happened with my own father, child, you know, and everything. So it's it's been a lesson to me as how not to live your life really, and it's instilled morals in me that I've carried throughout, you know. And moving forward, in terms of what may or may not happen next in the sport, people talk about the need for a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Do you think we know enough already that actually having an amnesty just lets people off the hook? Um... I don't know really. I think um, I think the main thing Lance has come forward now and admitted it to the world. Now it's the inform our, 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 us as a sport, the UCI are our governing body, and us as riders sometimes we feel, apart from being able to say what we think in interviews and stuff, we don't really have a, a union where we all stick together. Everyone's pretty individual, and. Um, as a as a as a, a riders now, we kind of need a bit of leadership from someone, and n and normally that would come from our governing body, the UCI. So now, with the information they have from the Lance case, USR, and all this other stuff going on, it's now for them to take leadership now and act on the riders' behalf to to to, to not salvage our sport because our sport's in a good place with the riders at the moment, but but regain credibility for for the rest of the world that are watching our sport. I mean, th there's clearly a role for the riders, for the likes of you, for the likes of a team that yeah. has always said... There is a role, yeah, but I think we're doing that. We're leading by example. Um, not in just the things we say, but in what we're doing and the way we've gone about our, ourselves for the last four years since this team was, was started. And nothing's changed in that four years. And um, we've won the world's biggest bike race, clean. And... Um, we're, we're an example to the rest of our sport. And Lance said it himself in that interview that the sport has changed. And when he was doing that, we didn't have the testing like we do now. And he was able to get away with it. He said we didn't have our competition testing. We're subjected to that now. Our whereabouts and everything is well known. It's been well documented seven days a week. And um, so the sport has changed and um, we're an example of how it's changed. It, it strikes me that, in a, in a sense, you guys have got lumbered with having to justify the misdemeanours of, of the last generation. But again, Monday, another big trial, Dr. Fuentes in Madrid. It's another chance that cycling's name is going to be dragged mm. through the mud. Well, that's an ongoing affair. I mean, that's um, again, that will probably come as no surprise to a lot of people involved in the sport because I think that's been going on now since 2006. So six years ago now, this that, that whole thing you know, comes up every now and again. But the impact of that case, we haven't really seen that yet, like we've seen with Lance now. Um, so, in you know, whether the, there's riders involved that are still active now, then there are. I don't know. I really don't know. There are some riders that are active now that have served suspensions for being involved in that case. But one as to some that haven't been named yet, we don't know yet. Obviously, we'll, all will be revealed in time. Your Children, and uh, you know, if you don't want to answer this, of, of course, they turn around and say, Dad, I want to be a cyclist. What would you say? I prefer if you'd be a rugby league player, mate. But um, no, my son's already into cycling, loves cycling. He's got a bike, got him a track bike for Christmas, and he's going to want to take it up. And um, I would love him to take it up, you know, and follow in his dad's footsteps, you know. I, I You wouldn't worry. No, his dad's won the Tour de France. His dad's one of the most successful Olympians in our country. His dad's got a knighthood. He's won this, that and the other. Mon sports person out of the year. His dad is something to look up to and aspire to be. And that makes me so proud 
that I've got no skeletons in the closet that I one day have to go and explain to my children, like we saw with Telly when Lance was crying about his kid asking him, you know, it must be nice, not just as a sportsman aligned to the rest of the world, whatever he did, but to know that you're never going to have to have that conversation with your own children one day. And that's as much about being a good parent as anything. And I said all along, I said in my Guardian piece last year during the tour when I was getting quizzed about, I'd rather go and stack shelves in Tesco's and be a good father to my children than live a lie and have to explain to them one day why we've lost everything, we've got to sell the house. So, and that's why I choose to, I'm going to stop now, but that's why I choose to live in England. I'm proud of what I am, Sir Bradley Williams, so, you know, 